Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Scully Nomad here, and an extra special welcome on board my Juno Sonata C40. On today's episode, I'm going to be servicing the engine. Now, there's an inline filter between the fuel tank and the engine, so I'll be changing that over. Now, I did have a few problems with it priming, which I'll explain during the video. Now, I have two of those cartridges to replace uh, within a big unit. Um, and then on the engine, I've got a fuel filter actually built on the engine, and then I also have the oil filters. So I'll be changing the oil filters and the oil. I'll be changing the impeller for the raw water, so with a marine engine, rather than having air cooled like a car would, it basically sucks water in from underneath the boat. The water circulates the engine and goes back out. That's why you see boats with the, um, the water splashing out the back. Job that I won't be doing, but I'll tell you how I, I did it last time, will be changing the fan belt here. Now, I didn't need to top up the coolant, but I'll show you on the engine um, where you get rid of um, the coolant out of the system and then um, how to top it up. So yeah, uh, let's uh, check it out. Hopefully I can entertain you for a little bit. Now, I did realize that I'm almost under a thousand subscribers. So if you do like this type of stuff, then please uh, subscribe. Um, I do all sorts of different types of stuff. So like outdoor stuff, I work at events, all different types of things all the time. And of course, uh, there will be boating related um, content. My engine access is pretty decent. So I have these uh, like panels and everything. Most of the filters are over on this side. Um, but let me start off with the first one. Now the previous owner didn't know that there was a filter in here. So I actually changed it to this one. So the previous one, I've got a picture somewhere of it and I'll throw it up. But first of all, we're gonna turn the fuel off, which is here. And there's little arrows to tell you which way the fuel's gonna go. But it's quite hard to access this section. So what I do, so I've took the cable tie off for this section of the pump so I can access it a little bit easier. Okay, so I found a bag big enough, sandwich bag. So what I'm gonna do is get it ready. I apologize if my arm's in the way, but it's very tight here. And then I'm gonna drain the filter now. And then we just need to undo the top in order for the fuel to come out. So I'm just untightening the top here. And I'm holding the bottom. Now when I first got this filter, one of the glass bowls actually smashed. Um, so they are quite fragile, surprisingly. So I don't want the button to fall out. Okay, so here's the screw coming out. There we go, so here's the glass bowl. There we go. So just nicely, I don't want anything smashing down at the bottom. So, we've got the first filter here. So I'm gonna inspect the uh, the fuel inside the bag and I'm gonna drain it out. But I've put the um, a number on the cartridges so I know which way around they went. So the one was the first one in line with the fuel. And then you've got this other one. So let me clean out the diesel and then I'll show you the assembly part. Now I've emptied the fuel and I'm not going to use this fuel. Uh, into a bowl, so I'll be disposing of that. And this is the assembly. So from the bottom, you've got the plug that goes into this screw here. Get the seals, the cartridge goes in like that, and then that bolts on at the top, actually, on the, um, the didgeridoo, whatever it's called over there. Now, the old seals didn't come off, so what I've done is I've just put my phone below 
uh, with a torch. So you can see the kind of black rings there. Now inside the box, so when I first bought these, they were about £5, they were £8 on Amazon. But you get new seals and you get the cartridges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out some new diesel and lubricate these. I just put a bit of diesel in the bowls just so I can lubricate them. Now that I put the old seals out, we've put diesel on these o-rings and just put in the top ones in by hand now i had to come back and reassemble these cab filters so while i was trying to prime the system no fuel was going from um, the cab filters to the engine and when i was running the engine the only fuel that would come through would be the one in the primary filter now I had a friend come over and he said that I may have put the seals on the wrong way around because they're slightly different sizes. On closer inspection, I realized one of the glass bowls had a minor chip inside along with one of the O-rings being deformed. Now I did this job over the space of two weeks. So my intention when I was at the boat originally was not to do the engine servicing, but only do the fuel polishing, which was my last video. Now I thought I had plenty of time and if everything would have went to plan, I should have completed this task also, but instead when I came back to the boat I discovered a load of um, diesel in the bilge. Since I didn't plan on doing the engine servicing, instead I went drinking and walked the dogs from the um, Cardiff Dogs Rescue Hotel, uh, which is what I like to do for fun. Okay, the, uh, the bag set up, I got a bit of tissue underneath to catch the most of it and I put the loops on just random parts and I can actually do this one by hand, not because I'm super strong, but I just didn't tighten it that much. So here we go. This one's a bit easier. Again, we're using the bag just to try and stop as much mess as possible. As you can see, some diesel's already coming out. There it is. Old filter. I'm just gonna empty it. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, happy with the um, the diesel in there. Now I'm going to pre-fill the filter. So the cartridge itself will soak up some of the diesel. Now it's quite handy to have a, um, a jerry can with about 10 litres of diesel in there. So you can pre-fill the filters. Just makes it a lot easier. We also want to make sure the seal on here has some diesel on it. Okay, now we want to carefully place it back in. So I put some tissue just to try and stop the mess as much as possible. I'm going to hand tighten it. We're not going to use any tools. Back to the on inline filter. I'm going to pre-fill them using a blue bleed screw. So the way I'm just going to do that is a tissue around the middle bit and a filter. I'm going to slowly fill it up and that's going to fill both of the um, cartridges. Now I've tidied up the area. I've put the new seals on so I disassembled both of them and put new seals on. Now I've also put a plastic bag on each side of them, a sandwich bag, so I can see if anything leaks on there. Now I'm just going to turn the tank back on. So basically my friend he said when um, the best thing to do with um, doing a fuel filter change is with your um, inline filter, which uh, for us is going to be that one. If you take the hose off here, Let's see if we can get some more light on here. So if you take the hose off from here and add one of these bulbs in place, what you should be able to do is get the fuel all the way up until that bit. So what, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to prime the pr um, inline filters first. Then I'm going to take this off 
and then I'm going to prime it from here. This one is now full to the top. Ignore the date on there, folks. Not sure how many pumps I'm going to need. I can, I feel like I can feel some kind of pressure now. Oh, oh, here we go. Cool. That as you could probably guess, I am neither organized or a mechanic. Now, I just make these videos just for fun. Probably won't be back at the boat anytime soon. Um, but I will be doing a few videos, mostly around my car that's held together with duct tape and hope. So I'm trying to save money to get a van. So I'm just going to take the bleed screw open. And then I'm going to keep pumping it until it comes through. Do so we need to use the manual lift pump, and then this is going to help get. Oh, there we go. We got it. We got it, folks. Beautiful. Okay, so this is uh, the cartridges. So this top long one here is the first cartridge. Got the second one. And a Volvo one. So let's take a little bit of a closer look. So here's the uh, the cases for the first one. And then the second one. And then there is a slight colour difference. So this first one's a little bit darker than this one, but not too much into it. And then this is the Volvo um, one the engine. Oh, fire one. It's the bottom of the bowl. It's a much better quality cartridge. Okay, next up we're going to do the impeller uh, as part of the, the water side of cooling. Now, here's from the filters so you can see a little bit of water at the bottom there now my last video was a um, fuel polishing video uh, where I talk about diesel bug and stuff um, but here we go you can just imagine that this is the condensation inside your fuel tank the drops go down and settle at the bottom and sooner or later it all kind of mixes together as you're juggling along and then your fuel doesn't burn I'm just going to close the seacock here so that water can't come inside the boat through the raw water impeller intake. Now this is where the impeller is. So I'll put a bucket because I'm going to get water probably coming out of this tube. So I'm just breaking the paint. Looks like a little space back here. Can get to. Boom, there we go. There's a little spot just there. So here's the impeller. So it almost looks like, yep, that one snapped. So let's get that out and swap it over. Yep, there we go. Now I'm just going to use a wire brush. I mean, it's not really that dirty, um, but then I'll put the new casket on. But yeah, let's uh, find the broken bit. Here you see, I've heard people having these um, break and they go into the engine. But yeah, oh, okay, here's, here's another one. So there's one there. That one's fine. That one's okay. That one's got a little tear in it. Yeah, that one's fine. Oh, yeah, another tear. So I've got three there, one of them which is pretty bad. Also cleaning the actual part itself so they're actually paper gaskets that go on here so you can see where the papers kind of coming off here so 
so we're going to make that nice and smooth. Okay, I found the screwdri um, screwdriver worked better to get the gasket off the paper gasket, um, and then it comes with this gel, the impeller. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to soak it all on. Our little ball, spin it around, get it all over the shop. So I'm going to put it on the face here. And all the stuff inside the bowl, I'm going to try and get in as much as I can without wasting any. And then it went in that way. So, so you kind of twist it as you're going in. I'm going to clean where the gasket will go because I'm going to add this hammerite stuff, whatever it's called. So it's a adjoining compound. Now it's simply just the case of um, putting the housing back on and tighten up the screws. Now I make these videos for fun, they're not really designed to be tutorials or anything, uh, but let me know what you'd like to see and I can film that type of stuff for you. So if you like this kind of uh, DIY stuff, let me know. Now I'm not going to drain the coolant on this one, but this square bolt here is where you do drain the coolant from. Um, I don't need to do it this time around, so I won't. But I, I clean the heat exchanger, so basically this boot comes off here and on the other side, and you just tap it through and then the heat exchanger itself comes out and then you can um, you can dip it in like a chemical that cleans it and then you put it back on um, but I did have the top here corrode off so what I did is I took the whole unit off which was a, a real nightmare and um, you know I repainted it in the Premier Inn um, I've, I've got some pictures somewhere of that um, but basically this cap here had come off now it's two different metals so they do like an epoxy, a two-part epoxy, which I've used on there. I'll put that on the screen and it's, it's worked pretty well. It's uh, been two years now uh, since it's been on and it, it's pretty rigid still. But originally I did try and get it professionally uh, welded. Um, but basically the shop says because the two different metals, it's very difficult to do and they wouldn't do it. Now this is definitely not a Premier Inn hotel room, so if you work for Premier Inn, this is definitely not one of your hotel rooms. Uh, but I spend about half the year in hotel rooms uh, all over the country, but yeah, I did the priming and the uh, the finished paint job because I was basically stuck in one for about a week. But double check the windows open because this hotel didn't. The last part of the coolant system is the actual coolant itself, so I'm going to uh, top it up. But yeah, the cap is just exactly the same as a car. Lefty Lucy, so it should come back quite nicely. There we go. Now I can see there is coolant in the top, so I don't need to add any. And I'm just gonna give um, a few of the electrical connections a bit of a spray. The back of the alternator. Now this is the gearbox here, so I just need to loosen it off. A little dipstick in here now like the previous owner had overfilled this so there is marks just like your oil 
Now my understanding is it's just to this line, that's all it is. There's no marks or other gauges anywhere. So that's what I filled it up to. Let me know if it's wrong, that'd be very helpful. This is the um, shaft that's connected to the engine. And this here needs to be burped. So if you give it a squeeze, sometimes it will leak a bit of water out. So it is below the water line. You're also meant to grease them uh, from time to time. So to get a plastic straw, dip it in grease. So I'm just using a waterproof grease. And then what you do is you slide it in and then you squeeze it through. So let me get in a better position. Just got the straw in. Squeeze the boot open a little bit so you're in. And then what you do is you just rub your finger and you'll compress the grease inside. And then out you go. And then just clean it around with a rag. I did change the belt last year. So it's a new belt, um, so there's not much play in it. But the way that you take it off is, see the bolts here. So there's one at the back, so you undo that one. And then there's a, one down here and on the other side. Basically, you just undo this and then it can move uh, left and right. You can basically see by this. So this is like an adjuster. I'm about to do the oil change um, for the boat. Now, the first time I did the oil change, I used one of these and I didn't really have that much success with it. Um, so I don't really recommend this type. I know they're a bit more affordable and uh, they're quite more compact compared to the other one. So both of these use vacuum pumps. Now I brought this one when I serviced my car and basically the oil pretty much just jumped out of the vehicle, which works great. When I couldn't get this to work properly, I use the uh, the 12 volt oil extractor pump. Now this one's a pretty good one. I actually forgot that it was on the boat, so I just came across it. Now I made a fuel polishing video, which was the last episode. Um, now I'd recommend using this for that uh, because it's got a higher flow, so you'll get a, a bit more of a uh, kick for it. But yeah, I do recommend these ones. So if you do your own car servicing. Um, it makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to be using this one for the engine. I'm going to put this one away. Now it's super easy to use. So there's three different size of attachments. This is the one that fitted in my car and it's the one that fits in here, which is working pretty good. So basically just feed it in. Can't get it in anymore. The other end just goes in here and then you pump. Easy. So uh, let's give that a go. So just a few pumps. And here it comes. It's coming up the tube now. Now last time I just left it and it all just basically did it for me. So let's give it another couple of pumps. Oh, there we go. We can hear it. Okay, now each line represents a litre. This is four and a half. Now I'm a bit confused because on the one it says oil capacity 6.4, a VDS 4.5. So that is about 4.5 and I can't get any more out. So if anybody knows which way around it is, then uh, please let me know. Now put the oil dipstick back in and then I'm going to take the oil filter off. Now with the oil system my understanding is because it's more pressurized that the oil um, filters basically get sucked in and sometimes they're quite difficult to remove. So although when I did this it was hand tightened it was a while ago now. Um, but yeah let's uh, get the oil pliers out and uh, let's see what happens. So I'm going to try and grip it near the end here because that's where it's going to be the most robust. Let's uh, have a little quick feel. Oh, 
very nice. It's exactly what we want. These are control cables, by the way. So I actually had one break. So I believe it was this one. And uh, what happened is um, the throttle basically wouldn't do anything, like forward and backwards, and this had snapped. So luckily we uh, had a, a mooring boy um, that we just, just so happened to drift apart um, after coming back from Bristol, uh, which was a crazy story. If you want to hear the story, let me know and I'll uh, help you out there. Just going to clean up the area a little bit. Now we're going to use the oil out of the old can just for the seals. So it's going to help it stick on a little bit better. And uh, righty tighty. That was just by hand, that's all I'm going to do. Apparently you can send off your old oil and uh, they analyse it to see if it's um, if your engine's on the kaput. And this is where our engine cap is. It's very warm right now. Looks pretty good in there. those who are watching for entertainment purposes, which I'm sure you all are, the oil does have markings on. So I managed to get four and a half liters out. So that's exactly what I'm gonna try and put back in. So we're gonna go all the way down here. All right, in goes a funnel, because as you probably guessed, I'm a super messy worker. And then we're gonna start pouring it in. Oh shit, <laughs> as I told you, According to the Volvo Penta manual, it says to change the oil every six months or 100 hours. The oil that I'm using here is the Texaco Dello 400 RDS 10W40. It was recommended to me from a couple of cruiser friends of mine. I tied it up and then run the engine for about half an hour. Now, the marina has a great community and I've got a whole bunch of friends and we all help each other out. So here's a little time lapse of me and my... Uh, buddy Mike so this is his boat so it's a Genosan Odyssey 47 so it's a couple of sizes bigger than my one you know you go around helping people out and they uh, help you out as well so they're more than happy to do that so but yeah he's also one of my drinking buddies and also my neighbor at the uh, marina overall great guy so more than happy to help him out thank you very much for your time for watching this video and I appreciate your likes comments and questions and feedback and I'll get back to you as soon as I can thank you very much extra karma points if you subscribe if you like the maintenance style videos um i'll be doing my car brakes my header tank and starter motor because they kind of all need changing i mean as i says my car is held together with duct tape and hope so uh i am saving for a van 